Well, greetings, hello, and welcome back. Episode number four coming at you. I'm Imperial Jedi, wishing you a great whatever time of the day it is for you. Afternoon, evening, or good night, right? Truman Show vibes. Yeah, welcome on in. If you're finding us for the first time, hello. It's episode four of an ongoing Let's Play series with a bit more of a tutorial focus in mind and a vanilla focus, even though we're using mods. So that's a mouthful. But we're all over the place. Yeah, we're having some fun here. So um, the theme for today's episode is to build out some uh, neighborhoods and show you guys how to put in custom homes, all the way down to just as simple as um, having the base game, to as complicated as you're placing everything down individually and uh, questioning your own sanity. So let's uh, let's just jump in with that, shall we? I've got um, a couple quick things I want to point out as well in between episodes here. So I appreciate feedback and comments. One power, don't worry, we'll get there in a second. But yeah, I'm kind of hoping we catch a bus in the heat of the moment. Of course, there is not one. But yeah, so uh, I went ahead and I changed all the buses over. So we have a uniform ride fleet, figured out the Bendy Boys and all that stuff. So we're Bendy Boys heading towards the industrial area and we've got the ride uh, in town. And it's a mix between our hybrid electrics and just uh, regular ones. But yeah, so really quickly, I noticed that this bus stop right here, the distance in between these two intersections didn't give us enough space. So I've got to move this down because when the bus stops, it's still blocking a live lane of traffic. And this only works because we're turning right. If we were not turning right here, this would be a no-no. Probably don't even need the two stops to be honest with you, but convenient for our locals. But yeah, if we were uh, turning left at that intersection, we'd probably see the bus line go straight go around the corner and do something really wacky to get to its objective. Sometimes the bus follow uh, road rules, you know? All right, so that was one of them. And this is a really easy fix. Excellent. And uh, just over here, a little bit too much volume. So I wouldn't say that our design is bad or anything like that, but just at this point with one highway intersection, volume is starting to catch up with us. So I'd like to help out our friends here and exercise some eminent domain and uh, let's upgrade this road i'm using a wider road so we get the extra lane for turning and this road is from the industries dlc so if it's not familiar to you you may not have that dlc all right rezone get rid of these little rocks and we should see both these now being used for turning oh yeah that's great if we wanted to get a little bit more volume through here and we wanted to use a traffic president, we could go in and get a third lane going. Do we have access? We do. So US big roads. And from previous episode, remember we did a change to that one. Why don't we get a third coming in here? It's a lot. Okay, so left, left, right. There you go. Make up your mind before. Control S will just auto complete your uh, your junctions there. So these guys will say two lanes for turning left and one for going straight. Very straightforward. And then we'll cap it at a T intersection at the top here. And let's do some one way roads. I can't wait to unlock more of these roads, you guys. The next milestone is getting so close. Oh, I've turned off my snaps. I'm gonna grab some one-way roads through here. And we'll stop expanding the industry past this line. The overall goal is to still move the industry out of here, <clears throat> build a whole new spot for it altogether. But until then, Let's create a little barrier with roads. All right, bear with me. Let me just build this out a bit boxy, but oh, I wanted to not zone on that one. I know we'll get some money back for the refund, but let me see if I can not. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's how you. Oh, for goodness sakes. You know they let me vote, eh? Give me a driver's license and everything. Um, okay. Up we go with this. Keep the gap. Maybe that could be a little one-way circuit. I love doing those. They're so good for in-town traffic. Mm-hmm. 
And honestly, it would be a great boundary point too between offices and uh, industry moving into residential. Okay, I'm going to buy another tile. And I don't mind that this is being like a super grid up here. It's going to be pretty simple for expansion. And I'd make the argument too that like when the city is done expanding in air quotes, like this could very well be like dead middle. So having it like a grid would just be like logical to build off of this. And I definitely am going to need uh, some more bridges and whatnot going across. I just don't want to interfere with this highway yet. And we got to figure out where the next highway interchange is going to go and how we're going to deal with this hill. Like there's just so many variables. But yeah, the theme of today, I haven't lost sight, guys. I know we're taking forever to get there. But I will show you. By the end of this episode, you'll have confidence to be able to do it yourself, on console even. As you roll your eyes and switch it to two speed, right? No, no, no. Okie dokie. Let's build some neighborhoods that are well spaced. And let's go to a skinnier road if we can. Actually, the first road back, let's make wide. But I've got my vanilla plus roads, which are only one tile wide. Look absolutely great. And we're effectively going to be making some in-town suburbs right now. So the goal is to have these just look a little bit more squished together. I don't know why I keep thinking that's what I want to do. And a wider road again. Okay, not too bad. And we'll try to mirror on the other side, more or less that. All right, without further ado, finally, how do you do it? Imperial Jedi, What? what is this magic? Explain to me. All right, so the first thing you're going to do, this is very simple. There's no mods, there's no assets. This is just the absolute base game. If you're on a European map, you'll have to toggle on from your content manager. If you go to the main menu, content manager, and if you click on styles, there should be the option for... Um, Gosh, what do they call it? I'm drawing a blank off the top of my head. It's like default vanilla or like a European vanilla. And so if you're on a European map, you got to have the default enabled. And if you're on a, um, uh, you know, the default map, you need European enabled. And if this is not well explained, I apologize. But yeah, content manager, game's main menu. And all you're looking for is under styles. Just click those options. And then what we've done right here is I've taken my district tool. I'm trying to go nice and slow. And if you go slow, it'll snap to your uh, intersections. And it has a yeah, semi-tough time, but it'll follow some of the nodes around. Okay, so Meadow Square. I'm actually going to include the uh, commercial as well. So this is going to look way more effective if it was um, high density. So I'm not going to bother zoning, but I'll just show you how it's done. So if we click on the name of the district, go to our styles, because we enabled the styles, we can now do default. Is that what they call it? Yeah, default style. And then European. So European is going to be more for high density buildings. You'd see the difference. Uh, if we were to zone a whole wall of, say, like high density residential, it would have that, like, you know, the Paris style block where they're not too tall, but they're all, like, you know, touching uh, touching each other kind of thing. Uh, non, um, non detached. That's what I'm looking for here. So we'd see that uh, come in. And that one is no mods at all required. It's just the base game. So vanilla, very friendly, uh, console, very friendly. The next one is going to involve having a content creator pack, a CCP. I don't like that road anymore. So the content creator packs are going to be found in the workshop and they are done from uh, Paradox themselves. They find uh, people that are popular in the workshop and they do a little team up. And so one that is absolutely awesome to use is European Suburbia. So I'll go ahead and click that on. And I'll just show you just for one little block here, just for example's sake, because I'm not going to change it after. So that means any buildings that are within this are going to come in under the European suburbia. And we'll zone right next to it as well so we can see a difference here. Let's throw it on three speed. This is pretty much the only available spot for new houses to come in. So we should hopefully see them uh, zone here, but you know how these things go. Whenever you need something to happen, it won't. And the second you guys look away, the buildings will come in, right? Yeah, there they are. All right, just a little bit of um, pipes, utilities. Cool. 
So uh, take a look. European suburbia only. Over here, you'll notice we do have some European suburbia. Why is that? Well, I've downloaded some from the um, uh, workshop as additionals. I'll explain that in a second. And I also have just like my random growables. So we're going to see everything in this mix right here. So let's make this larger just so we can see the difference a, uh, a bit more. Again, yeah, always examples never work that you want them to, right? So over here, only suburbia style, which is really, really handy. Here, a whole mix of the everythings. Could be the buildings from the college pack, which is what that one is. These guys here, which are from European Suburbia Workshop. And um, yeah, that's kind of nifty, right? What were to happen then, since you're curious, if we were to expand our already made district with the rule over to here? We'll take a look. So these buildings will disappear now. And it's going to apply that style over to here. If it was already a European Suburbia building, it's going to stay. And so these I downloaded. Oh, I made that mistake. I guess that wasn't going to be the one that was going to stay. So I've downloaded some of those from the workshop. They are dependent on you having the content creator pack anyhow, though. So that's why those are coming in there. But that, so there's a the difference, right? So let's bring that back. And so the modern city center, that one is also a content creator pack. This deals with commercial buildings only. And it's going to give a kind of like a German style to them. But yeah, wall to wall, no uh, no detachment as well. Kind of European um, vibe. And then this one here, big suburbs. I love this. This is from the workshop. So big suburbs. Let's switch this over. We'll see the houses disappear. Big suburbs is a little bit finicky because the buildings have to be a certain size. So this may or may not even zone all that well, which is why I was looking for um, a bit better with the spacing. And these ones here. Um, they work extremely well with the big suburbs roads. So if you check the description, you'll find all this stuff right here. We can even switch these roads over. In town suburb vibes. And so yeah, not too much effort, but just a little bit of effort to get these going. So you find a, um, a theme or a pack from the workshop, you download the whole collection. Uh, when you go to apply a theme, it shows up. Very, very straightforward, very simple. And if we were to click on, this is also really cool. So this is the picker. So I'm dropping like so much info on you at once. Hopefully this is not too overwhelming. Let's switch this. Yeah, so the picker mod is made by Cuboid. I can click on the eyedropper and I can click on anything like this and it will find it in the find it mod. And then what's really cool too is I'll look at the icon and if I right click, it will bring me to the workshop. Is that not wild or what, eh? Look at this. So take a look for the Big Suburbs complete collection. Right? Don't judge me. Nobody answers messages. Leave us alone. But yeah, the uh, Big Suburb complete collection. I'll link this below in the description. And this is going to have a whole bunch of cool stuff in here. So there's your roads. There's the growables. There's the buildings. Um, there's your prop collection too. So important to have that. So kind of nifty, right? But yeah, it's a really cool looking mod, I think, right? Okay, so another way to... Oh, that looks so fantastic, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Because you can see right here, the size of the buildings is not very... It's not compatible. This is not good. These are very specific. So we'll probably see a couple more zone in, but it liked the wall-to-wall -wall coverage a lot better. So you'll learn those kind of tips and tricks as you go, but this definitely is not going to serve as well otherwise. Okay, so I'm going to keep the uh, American style just up there. And I want to show you guys something else you can do for uh, your customization. So let's just leave these be for the moment. We'll come back and talk about those in a hot sec. I know it's kind of a waste to get rid of people, but maybe that's going to be a park eventually. All right, so I'm going to grab uh, another district here. And this time we're going to be using some DLCs. So the DLCs that we'll be touching on are going to be after dark and they're going to be from uh, green cities. So I want residential. I want to point out as well that um, the one I downloaded, the big suburb, as well as the European suburbia from the content creator pack, those ones are not going to have high density uh, building support. And I did talk about how there were some high density, sorry, I did talk about how there were some European suburbia buildings from the workshop. Let me find one. I think that's it right there. 
That's not it. That's a regular vanilla one. The yeah, Avania has gone back and touched up some of the European suburbia, but it's dependent on you already having that content creator pack. So I just want to show you just for argument's sake here. Um, no, 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 please. Game, why do you, you always do this, eh? Do you ever feel like it's a love-hate relationship sometimes with the games? Yeah, so this is what I'm looking for, I believe. Yeah, decorated uh, European, yeah. So if I right-click, this brings us to the workshop again right here. Um, bring that a little bigger. And we can see required DLC. So if you want just a little bit more variety, which I guess we could touch on right now. So if you download anything that's a growable, anything that's a growable, so we go to the workshop, and let's say we wanted to search by, um, say, building. And our keyword for this will be growable. Basically, anything here, especially the ones that say growable, when we download them, are going to have a random chance roll the dice to show up in whatever style we're, uh, we're zoning. So you download a whole bunch of commercial buildings, like a Starbucks, an IHOP, you'll have a yeah, random chance to see them pop in. If you want to place those down individually, that's where we're going to be for the next step right here. So, next step of that, I'll, I'll talk about oh so much you things. So many things happening at once here. Sorry, we'll let that fill in. I'll talk about the um, plopping the growables, and then we'll uh, do the DLC district specialization for this. Sorry, I'm all over the place right now. So yeah, if you go into your Find It mod, uh, you have the option to search by growable, and this is basically all the stuff here that has been downloaded. Uh, base game stuff is growable, so you'll see them in here, of course. So that's vanilla plus custom. You have those options. And if we wanted, say, like... Um, Oh, you know what's a great one? It's the Art Deco. So Art Deco is a content creator pack as well. Not a whole heck of a lot of buildings, but if you want just like a little, a little neighborhood, which might look kind of cute near the uh, the high school here. So if you'll notice, there's no need for me to zone. In the old days, you had to put down uh, green zoning, run the um, plop the growables mod, and then if you plop a growable over top of your green zoning, it would stop a new building from coming in and stop these from disappearing. So it's, it's come a long way, but that's, that's kind of the idea, right? So we're plopping by hand, and this is the one where you're kind of questioning reality a little bit here. Cute, eh? And maybe the middle one is uh, chopped out, and then we have little pathway with some parking or something okay so there you go so that's um that is a cool way to do it you're plopping down some growables right apologize for the order in which I'm putting these down everything kind of seems like a cool mess right here so you plop the growables these will function they'll go through their levels keep them happy give them services everything is good no need to worry about that right so we've done a uh, district specialization by using big suburb style. We've plopped the growables and we've used a find it mod under the growable tab for that. And we grabbed some growables from the workshop as well as stuff that's just from the game itself. And then now we're going to use a DLC to specialize. So we created another district, the Hickory district right here. And we're going to go over and I'm first going to touch on the after dark DLC. After dark is only going to affect your commercial buildings. So if we go over to uh, commercial specialization, we have um, not unlocked just yet, but let's keep talking about it for the sake of talking about it. We've got some tourism specialization, which is 5,500. That is awesome. It's going to be uh, more geared towards your high density because you get some hotels, which is really, really cool. So anything to do with tourism, hotel focus. And that I think is a really, really good way to get some taller than average commercial buildings in for your downtown skyline. So if you're one of those people that has to have some like, you know, tall buildings on the horizon, this is the vanilla friendly way to do that. So tourism specialization, hotels. Uh, next one is leisure. Leisure? Leisure? Leisure. That was a weird mix. But yeah, leisure. Um, politely, it's kind of like a red light district, but not, you know, not all the bad stuff in there. But yeah, it's like night stuff. So there's like uh, nightclubs, um, after dark hours, right? Like, you know, land center, a whole bunch of cool stuff, like late night gyms and everything. But again, it's a different way to customize, specialize, and um, yeah, get different types of buildings in. Now, the one we can showcase is from the Park Life DLC. That's a lie. It's from the um, Green Cities DLC. Yeah, I think I mentioned Park Life before. It's a Green Cities DLC. Wow, I swear, you know, I asterisk with all. I try so hard to just get all this right on the first take. And my goodness, sometimes I just, I, I don't even know what I'm doing, eh? Um, it's all in there somewhere. 
So Green Cities DLC, organic, local produce, affects your commercial buildings. This is one of the newer DLCs in the grand scheme of the game's like release cycle. These have a focus on larger parking lots. So if you're a vanilla player, a console player, and you want vanilla styled um, buildings with parking lots in your downtown, this is the way. Not all of them, but you might even get like a, um, gosh, what is it called? An electric vehicle parking lot just on its own to pop in. But you can see already, bigger parking lots. So use those, great combination. And what's really neat about the um, district specialization this way is you can overlap them. So if I wanted to have green city houses, which work for both low density and high density, we can pop those in too. Now these guys here have a few more building sizes. So not as restrictive as the uh, American counterpart behind us. And throughout the whole series, guys, by the way, we'll be doing this a ton, an absolute ton. So you'll see way more options. I'll talk about it a lot too, but this is kind of like the crash introductory course, which is all over the place, but getting there. Okay, so there is also one last way to do this, if you can imagine. Many, many, many ways, right? The last way is using a mod called RICO. RICO stands for Residential, Industrial, Commercial, or Office. Go figure, right? The different types of uh, zoning in this game. RICO gets its own button. Uh, RICO has a ton of additional random things you can do in your settings. I'm not good at this stuff, so don't, don't, don't ask me. I, I don't know yet. Um, basically, the short of the long is you can modify what is what and how much it costs, how many people work there, but that's it's above my pay grade, so I don't bother with that. The short of the long for me is I go to the workshop and I try to find stuff that's RICO enabled. And what that means is when I download it, it's going to already be in the tab I'm looking for. And so if I search through here, when I plop down these, they're going to work as like a low density commercial, high density commercial, an office. And what's really cool is there's no zoning required. So we have a modern office, art deco in style. And what if we were to put some jobs across from the street from these people living here, right? That's kind of nifty. So it's a very similar approach to plop the growables. However, these guys won't show up in your random growables list. So if I just do a whole bunch of office zoning, I won't get this one. Whereas the stuff that was in growables will show up or has a chance to at least. And then when we click on it, we are max level. I think that can go down if the people aren't happy. But the cool thing is you won't see the building style ever change. Same with plop the global. So no matter what level it becomes, high, you know, high or low, it's still going to look like this forever. If you come across a building that you love and you don't want it to upgrade later, make it historical. So it'll go through the levels, but it'll still look the way it looks. That's kind of cool too. So yeah, plop, um, plop the Grobles and Rico. That's kind of the nifty thing here. And then I yes, I was mentioning Rico. If we just go into the workshop, I saw some Rico stuff there. So we want workshop, uh, no extra tags or anything. We're going to type in Rico. And then uh, there's the mod. Pop over Rico, look in the uh, description for that. And then yeah, anything that's like Rico, Rico enabled, right? And if you want to toss it in for building, sure. And so I got check marks, Applebee's, all that stuff. It should show up in my um, in my list, unless I've disabled it in the content manager. So yeah, Rico, extremely handy. So let's go and plop a few more things so you can see. And this can be like, yeah, distribution centers for your industry. So maybe they pollute less and still offer some jobs. Right here, like a grocery, grocery store distribution center, right? So there's a Canadian grocer. This is Sobeys. This is the distribution network right here. Comes equipped with some cool looking assets too. Often these are decorated. There are sometimes though instances where they're not decorated. That is no good, right? Okay, just a little bit of power coming in here. And I'm going to show you, I guess there is one other way to get the custom buildings in. I don't know why I didn't uh, mention this before too. But you can download additional buildings that will show up as unique buildings. I don't think it's a bad approach to take, uh, you know, to plop a whole bunch of these down. I will say though, it becomes expensive and these buildings are treated more as a tourism kind of thing. So it brings in tourists from like the region. So this Marriott Hotel, for example, that would work because we want some um, uh, regional tourists, right? 47,000, that's very irresponsible to place that down. But yeah, downloading additional unique buildings. That's kind of a cool way to do it. Like this mall, for example, right? The donut mall. Let's put that near 
near here, right? So does it function as a mall? No, not really. Not at all. Does it look like a mall? Not really, because it's a donut, but still kind of cool. And as you can see right here, visitors, right? So it's 1440 Can't keep it. Way too expensive. And it's basically going to bring tourists in. So it looks cool, but not for us right now. So additional unique buildings, but if you want them to function, I guess that's why I didn't mention it. If you want them to function like residential and stuff, that would be the uh, the way. Well, um, yeah, I think that's it, guys. And I think that's it. Let's do a hint more just like expansion, because I need the population to kind of, you know, move upwards. But that might be it for today. All over the place, I hope in a good way. Hopefully we got some, uh, some good takeaways from this. Not as much building as I wanted to, but I think we got the point across here. There are so many ways to do custom uh, custom houses and whatnot. Houses, offices, businesses, zones, districts, cities. You know what I mean? You can do your whole... Um... Well, I guess you can't really do it. Never mind. You have to do only policies here. I thought there was a theme here, so never mind. But yeah, if you guys have any questions at all, like definitely drop me a line. Uh, join the Discord as well. Find me on a live stream. I'm very happy because it's just so easy to track stuff down. I need to know what to track down first though, right? But you tell me and I'll find this stuff for you. You come find me first though, right? But yeah, check the description and uh, drop me some comments and anything I completely overlooked, you let me know too. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next episode where we're going to have a bit more of a focus on expanding the city. And um, I think the episode after that will be putting in some new highway interchanges. So if you're curious how to either rebuild the main vanilla interchange or just expanding your generic highway, we'll probably tackle that over the course of a couple episodes. All right. Well, that's it. Appreciate you guys hanging out. Drop me your comments. No, that's good. I feel like I need to do more, but I'm going to try to keep these under, like, you know, at or around half an hour. And then maybe in a few episodes, we'll start ramping up the, uh, the time for these. But that's it, friends. I'll see you again. Happy building. Stay hydrated. All the best. And I look forward to reading your comments. Take care of yourselves.